Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. Let me say this and say this to all of y'all. Pressure make diamonds. Pressure bust pipes. And Rodney Rice was a born tracker. Understand this. Then it's my cousin. Constantly scream, I ain't no way I pay Rodney Rice and Lamont up, Sean. Now. Don't do it. And I went up to the federal penitentiary to talk to my father. He was in Terry Hutt, Indiana. That's where he was when I went up there to talk to him about this problem. Rodney Rice. I said, Pops, I got a police on my trail. They burnt my joint down. He want me to pay him and work for them, basically. My father looked at him and said, Eddie, baby, I'm going to tell you something. Don't you ever forget this. Jamie Harris was a Detroit police down on Hancock at the Hancock precinct. And I thought that thought myself. And Jamie Harris proved me wrong. I thought I could get by without paying the police and make this money. And a lot of niggas do. I would never deal with the police. I would never pay the police. Let me tell you something. Rodney Rice is worse than a nigga trying to kill you. Understand this. Because basically, it's the same thing. Rodney Rice will sleep in an abandoned house on the block where you selling to bust you. He wasn't no ordinary police. He was a tracker. And talking about you wasn't going to deal with him. You wasn't going to do no business. And I bet you that. I don't give a fuck who you was. You wasn't going to do no business. Because let me tell you how him, Heath, Cole, Cartavelli, Cook, and Upshaw. I'm going to tell you all something. Rodney Rice is sleep in a goddamn house all night waiting to bust you. And when he bust you, he gonna take all the shit. And if you say, no, nah, I ain't gonna give you all this shit, Rodney Rice is gonna politely put the shit in the car and put your ass in handcuffs, take your ass to jail, and the shit you wouldn't give him. Let me tell you what it's finna cost you since you wouldn't give it to him. First of all, it's finna cost you bond money. You're probably going to have to wait 72 hours to get that. Then after you get bond money, you're going to have to try to find you a good lawyer like Steve Fishman or Cornelius Pitts or perhaps Milton Henry at that time. And after you spend all that money, you already lost the package. That's gone. Now you fighting for your life. Because I told you Rodney Rice will put you in the motherfucking box where you fighting for your life. And you could have paid him off. And went on about your business and continue to get money. But you're going to be Mr. Big Man, Mr. Bad Man. Like you got a tent. You can just pitch a fucking tent and say, hey, I'm selling dope over here. You got a tent up like this shit is legal, man. This shit ain't legal, brother. So when you get a motherfucker for real on your trail, how do you think the feds bust you? Let's get this shit serious. How do you think the feds bust you? Oh, I ain't gonna deal with no nigga. I ain't gonna... Rodney Rice was as bad as the feds because he took it every hour of the day. When he got your motherfucking ass in his sights, he tracking you every hour of the day. Let me show you how he tracks your ass. I started off at French Road, the goddamn joint banging, making so goddamn much money and I'm picking up so much police heat and so much heat. So I say... I'm going to shoot the clientele over here on Cadillac and Forrest, Patrick's house. So I shoot the traffic over there to Patrick's house. What do you know? Now, this is how I ran it. I would sail all morning from French Road. Raid hours at that time was about 2 o'clock. So I would close down that French Road and I would move to Patrick's house. Now, let me show you how Rodney Rice track a motherfucker. When a customer went to French Road and Tony and Dennis them told them to come around on Cadillac to Pat's house because that's where I moved from two until the next day. Rodney Rice followed the customers from French Road to goddamn Patrick's house. Rodney Rice followed the customers from French Road to Field in Townsend. Rodney Rice followed the customer from French Road to motherfucking Mac and Marlboro. Now he know all your spots. And you steady screaming, oh, I ain't going to deal with him. I ain't going to pay him. I ain't going to deal with him. 
So now Rodney Rice turned the heat up on your ass. Mind you, all these goddamn spots making $50,000 a day. And Rodney Rice said to me, Eddie, you don't want to pay to play? Okay. He went and filled the towns in that night. Shaking them was running the joint. Bus shaking them, turned around, kept the shit, and then put shaking them out the house, told them to get the fuck on, kicked them in the ass and told him, get the fuck on. After he took all the dope and all the money, he kicked shaking them in the ass and told him, get the fuck on. And after Shaky and his worker left, Rodney Rice proceeded to burn the motherfucking house down to the ground. When I came in there the next day and seen the goddamn house, the motherfucking didn't even have a frame. It just had a motherfucking block. Like you did, just dug the basement. He burnt that bitch down to the ground. And then he caught, and then he caught up to me and told me, have you had enough yet? Or do you want me to burn all these motherfuckers down? Because I will. Now, are you going to fuck with me or are you not? Because I'm telling you, you're going to pay a severe price if you don't. And you're going to have to build all your motherfucking clientele somewhere else. Because I know where every one of your fucking joints is at, nigga. I know the one on Mac and Marlboro. I burnt the one down on Field and Townsend. French Road is sitting here. Now the move is on you. The next move is yours. What you gonna do? I'm thinking about that. At this point, I'm already, nigga, I'm gonna have to pay. I'm gonna have to fuck with it. And show you exactly what happened. After we had that conversation, The very next day, Dennis Richardson got out of jail. And he wanted the fuck out of me. Eddie, I want to run the spot. I got to run the spot. Man, you know I should be able to run the spot. Man, you got to let me run the spot. This is my spot. And he was right. It was his spot. 3875 French Road was his Kirk and Tony spot. He was right. All right, Dennis. Boom. Threw him the bag. Me and Craig, 250 was riding together. Threw the nigga the bag. In one hour, Upshaw and Rice had busted him. Now, he just got out of jail. He ain't been out of goddamn jail 24 hours. And he want to come back and run French Road. And I'm telling him, Dennis, slow down and just take a few dollars, man. Slow down, baby. Let you know, get back in the game and pay attention to how shit running. He wanna jump straight in the deep end. So he jumped straight in the goddamn deep end of the pool and up Shaw and Rice them bust his ass just as quick as he jumped in that motherfucker. Me and Craig pulled off. Dennis calling me, telling me they had took all the dope and all the money. Now they cleaning these motherfuckers up all around. They done burnt field and towns and down. Dennis get out of jail the next day. They bust his ass in less than an hour and take all the dope and all the money. Now, Mr. Jackson, the court is in your hand. You could end all of this, and I'd even help you out. I'd tell you when the raid team is out. And what you don't know, nigga, I want you to move my bags that I'm clipping all you niggas for. I'm ganking and clipping all you niggas, and I want you to move the bag. And you got three goddamn spots I know could pump them out and I'm watching them because I'm tracking and I watch all three of them motherfuckers. And at any time, I'll bust that motherfucker and burn it down to the motherfucking ground. You better remember that shit. Now, can we do some business? Damn. I'm looking at Dennis now. Now, Dennis... Can we do some business? You the main motherfucker screaming, don't pay him. And you the first motherfucker that paid him. As soon as he walked out of jail, grabbed the bag, they bust that nigga in less than an hour. In less than an hour, they took all my shit. And I keep telling y'all, the motherfucking spot was banging. So they took a few thousand and the whole motherfucking bag. So they cleaned house understand that and you talk about I ain't gonna deal with them like you can pitch a motherfucking tent here throw you up a sign and say hey we selling dope 
That shit ain't legal, man. You can't pitch no goddamn tent and put no sign up like it's legal. So you're just going to do what the fuck you want to do. And you don't want to share none of the goddamn wealth. And I got your back, nigga. If any of these niggas step out of line, I got your back, nigga. I'm telling you what you got. Any nigga out here that step over the goddamn line with you, they stepped over the line with me. And Rodney Rice was the first motherfucker at the hospital after I got shot. Who did it? Where the fuck they at?